I am here at the Getty Research Institute uh, taking a look at the new DT reel to reel film scanning solution. And we're going to move in here a little bit, take a look at the various components. On the left, we have the reel that is going to be uh, placed, you're going to place the film inside of the left reel, route it through some specifically designed reel handlers. This is in order to get the, the film then perfectly level as it goes through the gated area and on to the next roll. So, what are each of these components? We have alignment reels. This helps so that as the reel is coming from a slightly different location, as this depth here is fed through and fed through, the angle through the glass remains the same because it first goes down and under, back up too. So this angle remains the same. So this is an anti-static brush. It is optional. It slides in and out magnetically. We then have the gate. The gate is glass. It has a clutch release. And it can also be flipped all the way up. The space between the glass is sufficient to allow the film to transit through without a lot of tension. On the other end, the robot takes it up. You'll need to feed in the beginning, and then the reel itself pulls the film through. You do that by virtue of a handle on the right. And an independent handle on the left, so that if you're dealing with extraordinarily sensitive film, you can actually lead it out a little bit. So you have a little bit more of a loose, less tense piece of film. So as you bring it up, it's extremely handleable. Now, the camera in use is a DTR cam with Schneider lens. This camera is about to be changed out to the uh, DT offered phase one IXG100. Uh, that camera is not available at the time of the recording of this film, but will be the, the camera in the final uh, iteration of this. And that is the Digital Transitions Real to Real Film Scanner at the Getty Research Institute. Uh, so I'm Doug Peterson, and we're at the Getty Research Institute talking about the Real to Real Auto Cropping. Uh, in this tool, as you can see, we've captured a sequence of images, and that sequence is vertically quite stable, but despite good human effort, the left-right is not terribly stable, right? It's, for the most part, it's not too bad, uh, but keep in mind that the entire dimension shown here on the monitor, that is one and a half inches, or about the length of my thumb in the real world. So this is just a fraction of a millimeter left and right that is drifting, and we want to accommodate for that drift. So. There's three steps to this process. The first step is we're going to use the rotation tool. We're gonna to use the rotation tool to get this image completely parallel to the frame. Now it's very close to parallel right now, but the end result is about 0.4 degrees from being exactly right. So I'm gonna copy that value now to the rest of the images. Using this icon here along with the shift icon or the shift key, that will copy the rotation from this one image to all the other. Okay, step two, off on the left monitor, we're going to be cropping this image by hand, the first image, the master image by hand. We're gonna crop it starting here. And we're going to extend that crop to the bottom right hand corner. And we wanna be as careful as we possibly can be. We wanna be inside the image, but only by the smallest possible amount. We wanna basically be right on the edge. Okay, so having checked those two corners, I'll now check the top. 
Notice there's a little strip of black. Again, we want to be as precise as possible with this crop because it is the crop off of which all the other cropping will be done. So this image is now really nicely cropped. We'll, we'll worry about padding on a different step, but this is perfectly cropped to this image. Now, if we look off to the right here again, the auto crop tool, which I'll zoom in on, the auto crop tool has a roll fill method. The roll fill method is what we're gonna use here. Because the reel-to-reel -reel carrier itself keeps the film extremely straight, that is, it's not varying in a rotational sense, we're not gonna turn on the auto straighten tool. Pre-pass and optimization, we're gonna leave off and we're gonna put on 100 pixels of pattern. Okay, we have a button called Set Master and a button called Auto Crop. With the image selected that is our master crop, we're gonna push Set. Notice the rest of the images are already selected, so I'm gonna push Auto Crop. Now there's 156 images in the selection. Auto Crop can be applied to as many as you'd like. I'm using the thumbnail mode here so I can see it actually apply. It starts at that point and goes backwards, comes back to that point and goes forward. And what it's gonna do is mark by color coding its level of confidence. All the greens are high confidence. It's always possible that one out of a thousand or one out of 10,000 is gonna be wrong, but the green, are, it's highly confident it got the correct crop. The yellow is indicating a lower confidence of crop and something you should check more carefully. This one's marked yellow, this is marked yellow, these two are marked yellow, these are all green. When it's done, we're gonna QC it but the color coding can help us QC it a little bit more efficiently. Anything marked red should be basically, re should be assumed to be needing to be recropped by hand. Uh, in this set, I don't expect to see any reds, but if we got any reds, we know we have to recrop them by hand. Yellow, you need to crop, uh, you need to check the, the crop during QC very carefully because the yellow is lower confidence. The green still needs to be QC, right? We never let an automated process do the QC for us but we can do the QC on the green at a faster rate, potentially even in thumbnail mode only, uh, because we're highly confident that crop is correct. So 160 images, uh, off the top of my head, I think we did about, it's about 45 seconds have passed, an estimated 30, so it was pretty close on the estimate. And we are now wrapped up on the auto cropping, and we can do the QC. So again, here scrolling through the thumbnails, you can see mostly green, a sequence of yellow right around this split. This is where the two pieces of film were split together and the images before and after are lower confidence and it returns to higher confidence afterwards. So let's go through and take a look at the crops. For that, I'm gonna switch away from the thumbnail mode so I can see the individual view. And at a quick glance, you know, the quick glance is that this has worked out very well. The auto crop is tracking left and right it's also tracking a little bit up and down. Seems to be pretty good. Now let's sort by the colors to see how the different colors worked out. We had zero reds. We had 15 green, sorry, 15 yellows, 142 greens, and the blue one is the one that we use as the master. So we assume that that one's correct. So now let's take a look at some of these uh, green ones. I'm gonna turn off my left monitor at this point so that the video can just focus on the right screen. These are all the green ones. I filtered by green. Let's put up some grids and guides and check to see the stability a little bit more minutely before we played it back very quickly as sort of a general check, but now let's do a more thorough, specific check. So between this previous image and this next image, as you see, the image tracked to the right and the crop tracked with it. Very good tracking here. And so now let's go take a look at the yellows. Here are the yellows. There are 15 of them out of the 160 or so frames. And indeed, this crop is, we can immediately see off vertically by a good amount. So it's good that it flagged at yellow. That needs to be dropped down a little bit. I can just drag it down. One of the nice things about auto crop and capture one is that it's doing it on the raw file so that if I make a mistake and I need to correct it, I don't need to go backwards in my workflow. I just make a quick nudge to that crop. Again, here, this yellow one also off, correctly identified as being potentially off. Just drag it over to be correct. This one looks fine. This one is also off. So we're seeing about one in three of the yellows have a marked error that needs to be corrected. The crop size is correct and it's getting the right ballpark, but it's not quite right. Now that could be because the film itself, as you see in this case, look at the sprocket holes, they change substantially from the reference image. And here we're getting closer to that tape mark, which is why that's happening. This is where two pieces of film are joined together by hand and that's definitely off. 
And so now we're through that transition. And again, the sprocket holes and the color here, no surprise that it was off by a little bit. And that's all 15. So we've now finished the 15 that needed to be sort of hand tuned. Drive through the streets of California. Ready for a drive, John? Ready.